care. Welcome back to Science and Social Hub. Today, what we are going to see is Forest, our life friend, Chapter 17. Canopy Trees There are different types and sizes of trees and plants in the forest. Some trees, which are tall co and cover the sun from falling into the ground, these types of trees are known as canopy trees. The canopy tree measures 20 meter to 40 meter in height. It has abundance of food, hence it is a dwelling place. It's a dwelling place for many birds, insects, and monkeys. In this picture, you see canopy. Understory layer. The understory is the underlying layer of vegetation in a forest or wooded area especially the trees and shrubs growing between the forest canopy and the forest floor. Plants in the understory comprise an assortment of seedlings and saplings of canopy trees together with specialist understory shrubs and herbs. In this picture, you see understory layer. Forest floor. The ground surface of forest is called forest floor. The forest floor has many kinds of small, sm uh, small leafless plants such as mosses, livers and lichens, etc. The largest animal in the forest live on the forest floor. The forest floor has, uh, has also many kinds of insects and worms. In this picture you see forest floor. Food chain. A food chain is a series of organisms where all the organisms are dependent on next organism as a source of food. All the components of forest are interrelated to one another. In this picture, you see food chain. Interdependence of plants and animals. Plants and animals, humans included, are interdependent on each other for many reasons. Here, plants con consume decayed material from the soil for their nourishment and consumed by plant-eating animals for their survival. The carnivores then consume the lower animals of the food chain for their nutrition and survival. Produces Green plants produce food using water and carbon dioxide in the presence of sunlight. As, as a result, green plants are called producers. Consumer. Carnivores, omnivores and herbivores depend on plant and, and other plants and animals. Hence, they are known as consumers. Decomposes the microorganism which convert the dead plant and animals to, to humus are called decomposers. Example bacteria, fungi. They help in recycling of nutrients by decomposing dead plants and animals. In this picture, you see uh, exa an example of decomposer. Scavengers. Scavengers are animals which feed on dead bodies, dead bodies of uh, other organisms. They have the following characteristics. These organisms ingest organic matter. They feed on detritus, decomposing plants and animals as well as feces. Unlike carnivores, they don't hunt and kill their prey. Hyena is an example of scavenger, even vulture. Pollination. Pollination is an act of transferring pollen grains from the male anther of flower to the female stigma. The goal of every living organism including plants is to create offspring for the next generation. One of the ways that plants can produce offspring is by making seeds. This is how pollination occurs. Transpiration. Transpiration is the process of water movement through a plant and its evaporation from aerial parts such as leaves, stems and flowers. Water is necessary for plants but only a small amount of water taken, by, taken up by the roots is used for growth and metabolism. 
In this picture, you see the process of transpiration. Precipitation. Precipitation is any liquid or frozen water that comes from the atmosphere and falls back to the earth. It comes in a form it comes in many forms like rain, sleet and snow. Along with evaporation and condensation, precipitation is one of the three major parts of the global water cycle. That's all guys, the lesson is over. If there is any doubt or question, please put in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.